Sorry that took so long. Well, we couldn't have waited much longer, Brian. Would you give that to Ann, please? Uh -huh. To my wife. The most demanding, the most stubborn, and the most magnificent woman in the world. Oh, I have to drink plain water. What a sacrifice I'm making for this experiment. <laughs> Emil, I thought I told you to wait. Sorry, Mrs. Whitehead, but I have to go now. Have you finished that inventory of the maintenance supplies for the new nightman? Yes, ma'am. All right. Hang your keys on the rack. Your check's waiting for you in the front office, and I hope you've learned your lesson. Oh, help you get these days, really, that man. Dear, we're forgetting to drink to what this celebration is really all about. The first injection of our new miracle tranquilizer, MR-23. Let's hope it works. The it's the MR-23. Well, it's nearly 5 o'clock. What are we waiting for? We're all ready, Mrs. Whitehead. Are you sure you're all right, dear? Sure. Fine. Lab reports, everything normal. Blood, metabolism, sugar. We'll continue to check at one-hour intervals. Sit down. Ready, Anne? Ready. Well, here goes everybody. Oh. That was easy. What's the matter, dear? Mrs. Whitehead. I can't breathe. She's dead. I was trying to unravel an involved receivership tangle when the Chancellor of Midwestern University, an old friend, phoned and asked me as a personal favor to talk to a lady he was sending over. Little did I realize that Mrs. Clark, the lady in question, would involve me in one of the most bizarre murder cases I had ever encountered. I know you read about it in the papers, Mr. Maris. Yesterday afternoon, the police arrested my son, Brian. They accused him of killing this woman, Nina Whitehead. But, Mr. Maris, I know my son better than they do. He wouldn't kill anyone. I'm sorry, I just glanced through the papers. Who's Nina Whitehead, and what's she got to do with your son? Well, he... He worked for her at the University Research Laboratories. I don't understand scientific talk, but... Brian told me that they... They were looking for the chemical basis of mental illness. What did your son do at the lab? Well, he, he's what they call a zoologist. They study animals, Mr. Maris. What made them arrest him? I, I, I don't know, Mr. Maris. They wouldn't tell me not a word. I know what you must be going no, through, you, Mrs. Clark. You can't be known, Mr. Maris. I worked on my knees, scrubbing to see him through high school. We didn't live fancy, let me tell you. The slum would have looked good to the likes of us. But Brian stayed out of trouble. And then when he got to college, I took sick. He worked nights to take care of the both of us. Does that sound like a murder, Mr. Maris? I'll talk to the police, Mrs. Clark. Oh, hi, Herb. Well, oh, Lieutenant, how are you? Yeah, just fine, how are you? You know, I figured you were about due. Things have been entirely too smooth around here. What's up? <laughs> I understand you're holding a Brian Clark. Yes, I'm going to keep right on holding him, Miss Gilly. Sit down. You know, he tried to make it look like a heart attack, but we found curare poison in that hypodermic Mrs. Whitehead used. Curare poison? Isn't that the stuff the pygmies use to make poison darts? 
Mm-hmm, and the movies it is, but the labs use it in small quantities to control test animals. And you traced the poison to, uh, Brian? To a bottle in his lab. And we checked his records, and some of it that was missing hadn't been used on the animal. Well, couldn't there have been a clerical error? Now, wait a minute, Herb. What clerical error? I checked him out personally. His fingerprints were all over the hypodermic, which he didn't administer. And if that isn't enough for you, we found his fingerprints on the test tube and all over the test tube rack. What do you want? I'm only looking for the facts, Lieutenant. Well, you've got the facts. Motive. He hated her. She was a stickler for details, and everything that Brian did displeased her. Why didn't he just quit? He couldn't, Herb. It was part of his graduate work. She could ruin his chances of getting any advanced degree out of that university. And from what I hear, she was going to do just that. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk to Brian. Okay, Herb, I'll see if he's in. And that's the way it goes, Mr. Maris. I kept my nose clean all my life. Now, here I am thrown into prison and labeled a murderer. They found a lot of evidence against you, Brian. Then somebody planned it that way because I didn't kill Nina Whitehead. Did anyone else around the lab use Karari poison? Not that I know of. Could they get it yours? Yeah. We worked together. The labs were all open. What about hypodermics? Anybody could help himself. You're always borrowing something around a lab. Can you think of anyone who disliked Nina Whitehead enough to kill her? Sure. That's reasons you're looking for. A lot of people fall into that category. Why? Professor Whitehead was the high-powered thinker, but she ran things around the lab. She really drove people. Well, the day she died, she fired that poor caretaker, just like that. And after six years of rioting him. What was his name? Uh, Emil Hansen. What about her husband, Professor Whitehead? Did they get along? I don't really know. They fought like cats and dogs around the lab, but they always seemed to make up. And he stuck with her all these years. That must prove something. What was your reason for killing her? I didn't kill her, Mr. Maris. I didn't ask you that. I asked you about your reason. Okay. I won't hide the fact that she made my life miserable for me. We quarreled all the time. But our quarrel was out in the open where everybody could see it. And I wouldn't lift a finger against her. Okay, Brian. I'll go take a look at that lab of yours. Now, these are Asian roots and herbs. They're reported to produce strange trances and visions. We're trying to analyze the plants to try and find out what causes the odd mental effects. I'm probably boring you, Mr. Maris. No, I'm very interested in your project. But I have 10 minutes before my appointment with Dr. Whitehead. I'd like to ask you some questions, if you have a moment. Well, yes, of course. As a matter of fact, I'd like a breath of fresh air. Shall we go outside? Good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm really, really quite a fan of yours. I remember that you gave a, a guest lecture one time when I was an undergraduate. And you were so fascinating that I was absolutely smitten. Thank you very much, Miss Dollar. Oh, call me Anne. Everyone does. All right, Anne. How long have you been working here as a lab technician? Well, ever since I received my Bachelor of Science degree, about three years ago. Well, what's your part in this project? Well, I work on all phases of it. Of course, in the last month, I've been concentrating on research on um, lysergic acid derivatives. Lysergic acid? I'm afraid I almost flunked chemistry. <laughs> well, lysergic acid induces a common mental state known as schizophrenia uh, for a short period of time. Believe me, it's quite an experience. It's a weird one. <laughs> I know, because I tried it. You completely lose contact with reality. You know, there are plenty of times when I would like nothing better. Well, we're always looking for volunteers. I'll remember that. Tell me, you uh, must have known Nina Whitehead pretty well. What sort of person was she? Nina had a brilliant mind, Mr. Maris. Of course, a lot of people found her difficult to get along with. But I always liked her. And Brian Clark, what sort of person is he? Brian? I like him. He had his difficulties with Nina, too just as everyone else did. The police think he's the murderer, don't they? Yes. Do you? I don't know what to think. I feel sorry for him. Well, I almost forgot about the time. The doctor's waiting on Dr. Whitehead. 
ahead. This is Mr. Maris. How are you, Mr. Maris, Doctor? It was wonderful talking to you, Mr. Maris. Thank you, Anne. Should you sit down? I'm afraid I'm out here on a very pleasant task. Well then, Mr. Maris, why don't we get it over with? Doctor, can you think of anyone beside Brian who might have had a reason to kill your wife? No. Then I'm prejudiced. I was in love with her. I understand you quarreled a great deal. Yes. Yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact, we had a good, healthy hatred for one another. But that was around the lab and the times. Some people couldn't understand that. But they only saw us for a few hours of the day. I didn't kill her. If that's what you're suggesting, Mr. Maris. The only thing I'm suggesting is there might be people other than Brian with sufficient motive to kill your wife. I don't want the boy to die if he's innocent. No, of course not. What do you want to know, Mr. Maris? You recall an Emil Hansen? Yes, he was our night man. Nina fired him. Happened just before she died. Would Emil know anything about curare poison? Well, he worked here for a long time. He probably knew what it was for. Did you mention Emil to the police? No. Never occurred to me. Uh, Hanson was arrested in 1946 on a petty theft charge released because of insufficient evidence. Then that makes him worth investigating. Oh, not really. Servants and caretakers are always being accused of petty thefts. Sometimes they're guilty and sometimes they're not. That doesn't make them killers and Emil has no record of violence and no evidence linking him to Mrs. Whitehead's death. All right, Lieutenant. Thanks for checking Emil out for me. I think he's worth talking to. Tell me the truth, Emil. You knew where Bruce kept the Carrari poison, didn't you? I, I tell you, I don't know anything about poisons. With my eyes, it's more than I can do to tell tooth powder and scummy powder apart. Why didn't Nina fire you? I don't know. Didn't she give you a reason? No. You mean she fired you without saying anything? I didn't say that. Then what's bothering you? Nothing's bothering you. Who are you afraid of? No one. I, I'm just waiting here for a friend of mine. We're just going to have a little game of casino. Why didn't Nina fire you? I told you I don't know. She said my work was no good, but it wasn't true. What's the name of that friend of yours, the one you play casino with? You wouldn't know him. You could introduce me. Mister, why are you scaring an old man like this? You're hiding something, Eamon. I told you, I don't know nothing. All right. Here's my card. Call me if you ever want to talk to me. I don't want to. You heard me, didn't you? I did just what you said, just what you said. I never told him nothing. And I won't. Where are you? I've been looking for you all afternoon. Your secretary said she thought you might be coming straight here. What is it? I have something I thought you'd like to see. It's written by Nina Whitehead, and it's about Brian. It's sent to the dean of the College of Letters and Science. Where did you find this? In her outgoing file. Dr. Whitehead and I were going over her things, and we found it under the table. What do you think this will do to Brian? Just what it says. If anyone as important as Nina says that Brian is not Ph.D. material, that means he's through at the university. Of course, Brian never saw this letter. I don't see how he could. If she followed the school rules, she would have told him about it before she wrote it. Do you think she did? How should I know? All I know is that Nina was a stickler for rules. You'd better give this to Lieutenant Weston at police headquarters. Mr. Maris. This means that it's, well, it's just about over for Brian, doesn't it? I'm afraid it looks that way. The fact that Brian Clark knowingly concealed damaging information from me shook my faith in him as a man. 
Yet more pressing still was my belief that the real killer was at large and determined to get me, which meant that I must be getting close to the truth about Nina Whitehead's murder. But Lieutenant Weston's a hard man to convince without proof. Well, Herb, that letter just about seals the case. We're moving for a grand jury indictment. You're making a mistake, Lieutenant. You haven't proven that he knew about that letter. No, but I think I can prove that he knew it was coming. You haven't convinced me. I'm sorry. What do I have to do to convince you? Get myself killed? Herb, you're trying to tie a reckless driver up to a murder case, a driver in a car that you can't even identify. Yes, I am. Don't forget about that. What about Emil? Well, what about him? He's, he's not telling anything. Uh, besides, you scared him half to death. All right, Lieutenant. I have to go see Brian. I haven't got the first base with you anyway. No, and you won't without concrete evidence. Oh, incidentally, they're going to do a lot of testing on that new drug of theirs at the university lab, and I promise to keep our investigators out of their hair. I'll have to work by myself, then. Yes, Emil. What is it? I can't hear you. No, you're loud enough. Just speak slowly. I'm going to be killed. I know it. You've got to help me. Police? I can't go to the police. They tried to frame me once. All right, calm down. Now, where are you now? Fourth and Larchman. All right, just stay there. But I can't. Don't you get me? Can't you tell me what this is all about? I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Maris. I never made that monkey die. The Reese's monkey. He died real mysterious like. Yeah, that's why I got fired. They said I didn't feel it. But I never missed. Never. Now he died of something else. And if you ask me, it's got something to do with Mrs. Whitehead's dying. Now, wait a minute. Slow down. What's this about a Reese's monkey? And I'll tell you another thing. Mr. Whitehead don't care nothing about that wife of his. How do I know? I s he's sparking another woman. I saw him. Ye yes, I did. Emil. Emil. Is he dead? Yes, poor guy. He didn't have a chance. He was shot at close range. Uh, how did you get here so soon? I had advance notice. Emil wanted me to meet him here. Did he say why? No, but I had some hints. Something about a dead monkey and infidelity in the Whitehead family. Infidelity? According to Emil, Dr. Whitehead was sparking another woman. I'll let you know when I get some facts. Oh, wait a minute, Herb. Where are you going now? To get a confession from Dr. Whitehead. Well, just a minute. I don't like to interfere in your plans, but would you mind if I came along? I thought you agreed not to interfere with the doctor's experiments. Well, you see, circumstances have changed, and, well, I'm going to have to break my promise. No, you won't. I've been invited to participate as a volunteer in the experiment. Counselor. All I want is five minutes alone with Dr. Whitehead. Doctor? Mr. Maris, I told the lieutenant... I'm here as a volunteer, doctor. Oh. I see. Well, your personality test shows quite a favorable profile. Thank you. Our procedure is to take a normal person, induce schizophrenia with lysergic acid, and then give him our MR-23, see if it snaps him out of it. Very interesting. That rhesus monkey didn't die of malnutrition, did it? What are you getting at? You know very well what I'm getting at. I do not. The experimental animals are not in my department. I have other concerns. Yes. And I know her name. The gossip's been telling you about Anne. Is that it? You and she planned that killing to get rid of your wife. I wouldn't have touched a hair on Nina's head for all of the empty-headed doll faces in the solar system. I know about young girls becoming infatuated with professors. I've been around the university too long to let myself get involved with any such nonsense. How about Anne? How serious were her feelings? She wanted me to leave my wife. And you never told anyone? Of course not. Whatever for. Where is Anne now? She's on duty in room three, where you get your lysergic acid shot. 
Mr. Maris. I worship Nina. Drink this, please. What is it? Just a very mild sedative to prepare your body for the lysergic acid. Through that door, please. <laughs> oh. All right, now. Do you know what to expect? I have a vague idea. Well, at first, you'll feel as if you're floating off. Put down that hypodermic, Anne. I know the truth. You experimented with the curare poison on that monkey before you took Brian's hypodermic and killed Nina and killed Emil because he knew about it. You are a very clever man, Mr. Maris. All right. There's no sense hiding the truth. I wanted Sheldon, and I knew if I had her out of the way, he'd want to marry me. Why did you frame Brian? I... I didn't mean to, Mr. Maris. Really, I didn't. I... I didn't want them to find the curare poison. But I had to protect myself in case they did. Well, I'd love to be able to talk some more. But I must go. I'm afraid not. Get out of my way, Mr. Maris. You're not going anywhere, Anne. You're going to stay right here. You're the one who's going to stay right here. What is it? What's wrong? You see, I'm three steps ahead of you. There was a drug in that sedative you took. I told the attendant to give it to you. How long do I have to live? Oh, I didn't poison you, Mr. Maris. You're just going to go out of your mind for a little while. You'll be your normal self by morning. I, I'd love to be able to stay, but I've got a plane to catch. By the way, if you remember, please give Dr. Whitehead my love. Open up. Open up! Can't you hear me? Open! It's getting dark. I object. Your Honor, I object! Where am I? Mr. Brandt, get a pad. I want to prepare a writ of Sardio. Uh, take it easy. But I've got to write a writ. You can do it just as well sitting down. Now, take it easy. Doctor, what did he take anyway? He was slated for lysergic acid. Should he be reacting like this? We've never had a subject set off an explosion before. He should be much more docile. Something's exciting him. Who gave him the drug? Ann, but she's checked out of the lab for the day. Well, shouldn't somebody be here with him? Yes, we have attendants who look after the volunteers. Well, why wasn't an attendant here and why was the door locked? I don't know. Herb, listen to me. This is Lieutenant Weston. Can you hear me? Can you understand what I'm saying? In the case of Martin versus Green, the court held that parties are never in paradelecto where the promisor does not intend to perform his bargain. Herb, I remember that very well now. Doctor, I want to talk to Anne. I tried to reach her. She's not home. Well, you must have known where she could have gone. No idea. You must have some idea. Anne's gone. Herb. She's gone to the airport. Yep. 